Hola, Hola buen día. día. We finally took some new drone footage, so it gives you an idea of oh, drone footage. <laughs> so it gives you an idea of how dry it's been here. Yep. Um, we haven't really experienced the high temperatures and heat waves that most of Southern Europe has experienced so far, but that seems to be changing. So this week we are due for higher temperatures and you can actually feel the change. It's uh, hotter and drier already today. Yes, and that is smoke from the wildfire that's been going on and off for the past couple of days. It's the first one of the season that is close to us. It's not that close. It's probably like 30 kilometers away or so. Um, but yeah, that is the closest one that we have so far. garden was starting to get a little crispy um, and some of the crops are pretty much done like the beans and corn. So we're going to bring you with us today while we remove some of the old crops that are finished and plant some flowers from the neighbors. Hi. What you doing? Um, the neighbor pulled me over so Carolina gave me a bunch of cuttings flowers they have and she said to just stick them into the ground and water them. Okay. And I'm yanking out the old corn. Little corn patch experiment worked. We got a little bit of corn but there was only a little bit of corn planted. So now I'm just going to pull it out and then put it through the shredder as mulch. So that is what it looks like. I pulled the bottom leaves off so you can see quite a lot of leaves scattered around where I was working and a couple of the branches with flowers I ripped off as well. Come on, Betty. No, I don't want you peeing in my garden. Go on. So wherever you rip off the leaves or branches where that node is, they should make roots. So now I'm just going through and watering everything. Okay, so all of the flowers have been watered in. And if we take a look here, we have one watermelon. Grant harvested two pumpkins, so I'll show you those. They're sitting on our kitchen counter at the moment. Uh, there's another one there. And we have quite a few butternut squash that will be ready in the next couple of weeks. And we picked three red peppers and used them in the tomato sauce that we made. So you can see lots of flowers and some more peppers coming on the pepper plants. The cabbage and broccoli is not doing great at the moment. The tomatoes are doing okay. Some of them are getting blossom end rot. So that could be lack of calcium and also not watering uh, regularly. So we tend to leave the garden for a couple of days and then water it when we get home. This area is doing really well. It gets shade from the olive tree. So I would say half the day it's in full sun and half the day it has shade. So the Swiss chard is doing really well. And I also have some thyme 
and a couple of basil plants in here. I haven't dug down and disturbed the roots because I want to let them just do their thing. But the turmeric looks like it's doing really well. And the ginger is finally doing something. Banana trees are doing good. The one on the right here is as tall as me. Now our fig tree has its second set of figs starting. So the first figs that were on it dropped and I never did see where they went. So maybe birds got them or yeah, I have no idea. But these are the second figs growing on it. And the second ones that grow are supposed to be sweeter. I need to pick golden berries again because it looks like quite a few are ready. Unfortunately, it's been very windy, so all of the flowers blew off of our pomegranate tree, so no pomegranates. And we have some butternut squash. Now that's a good size there. We're just waiting for that one to get a little bit more color to it, and then it should be ready to pick. My current bushes are doing well, so we have a white currant, two red currants, and a black currant, so they're doing really well. Hopefully next year we'll get some berries off of this one. It's getting to be a good size. And the lychee tree is still hanging in there, but it's it's not really doing all that well here. And yeah, I mentioned how windy it was. Almost all of our pears have blown off the tree. So my job for tomorrow is to climb up there and pick the ones that are still hanging on for dear life. Over the past couple of weeks, we switched focus from our kitchen renovation to installing the rest of the drywall that we have on hand. We noticed that the insulation in the kitchen, what we did um, a couple weeks ago, really lowered the temperature in here. So we decided to use the remaining drywall to do the spare room and the bathroom. So half of the house is now insulated and ready to be painted. So today we're working on the spare bedroom. Grant's just removing the window frame. And we're going to quickly scrape this wall here to get any loose whitewash off. And just make sure that there's no mold anywhere on the wall before we start putting drywall. So that's the plan. You can see quite a bit of the whitewash is coming off and you can imagine if we were gluing the drywall to this it wouldn't be a very strong bond because the top layer is just flicking off very easily. So we have finished scraping the wall <laughs> and we're just cleaning up all the dust on the floor now and we're also going to spray the wall down with cleaning vinegar. So we've removed all of the lime wash from that wall and any of the dead mold spores that were still there seem to be just on the lime wash. But just to be sure, we're gonna spray that entire wall down with cleaning vinegar to make sure that any mold that was there is completely dead before we start putting insulation in drywall. Insulation in drywall. Mm. Oh, time you did something around here. Really? Mm. 
some nice moves you got going on there. You should be a professional dancer. Or... <laughs> I didn't know you were filming. I should have known. <laughs> what, do you funny. think I would say those things well, if I wasn't filming? Yeah, do I, you, do you think I don't care about my life? <laughs> you totally would. Looks good. Now I just gotta let it dry and then I can yeah. finish the drywall. Awesome. Okay. The plan is to finish the guest room and then we'll sleep in here while we prep our room and save up to purchase more of the drywall with insulation. And the drywall in here is finished. Grant just needs to sand and do a second coat of the drywall mud on the seams, and then we can start painting in here. Today, he's going to remove the rest of the lime wash, so most of this wall is done. And then he has to do that wall and that wall. <laughs> no. Fun times. I refuse. So he's gonna work on that while I edit video. And I'm almost done refinishing the bed frame. So that will be finished this coming week. So in the next two weeks, we should have the guest room completely finished and have it all set up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fix the orbital sander. Yes. We have a plan to fix that for cheap. Hopefully it works. Hopefully. We'll share that with you next week as well. So today I'm ready to do the clear coat on the nightstand. I'm going to be using a clear acrylic spray paint to coat and protect the piece. So this is the test block that I had originally painted with chalk paint over the wood stain. And then a few days ago, I did a clear coat with the acrylic spray paint just to make sure it was going to work. And as you can see, I have a damp cloth here and none of the chalk paint is coming off. This side, I just painted with chalk paint and it has no coating on it. So if I do the same thing, you can see there is paint coming off onto the cloth. The acrylic clear coat is going to protect the piece from scratches as well as make it so that I can wipe it down with a damp cloth without removing any of the chalk paint in future. So here we go. And yes, normally I would do spray painting outside, but it has been extremely windy here. And we also have all of the stray cats outside. So all of the cats that we rescued have their food in the annex building and, you know, they like to hang out with us and get into everything that we're doing. So. I don't really want footprints on this. All right, here goes nothing. So the first coat is finished. It should be dry in two hours. Then I will give it a light sand. You saw me kind of wiping at the top here while I was spraying because some dust floated down as I was spraying. So I'll wipe the piece down, give it a light sanding, and then give it a second coat in two hours. Okay, so this gives you a good idea of the before and after. So the nightstand is now completely finished. This is what it looked like before. There was nothing wrong with the original, a little bit 
of wear on them and scuffs. And for me, a little bit on the darker side for furniture. So I thought I would refresh it and lighten it up a little bit. The wood stain is a little bit darker than the look I was going for, but it's still quite nice and it is lighter than the original. And then with the nice light teal color chalk paint, it really brightens up the piece. I took advice from Maria because I wasn't sure what to do with the hardware. And I almost thought I was going to paint it black, but she suggested polishing it to restore its original finish. And I decided to go that route instead. So it's a nice coppery color. It still blends in, but it's not as dull as it looked before. And you'll notice this part is removed because you can see the shadow in behind here where it overhangs into the detail. And I think it looks a lot cleaner and nicer without that extra little piece on the hardware. I've been working on the bed frame for a couple of days now, so I have not started on the headboard yet. This is what the original finish looked like, so it matches the two nightstands that I'm working on. And this is the footboard that is almost ready to treat with the washing soda and hot water. So most of it I was able to sand using the orbital sander. Poor little Betty hanging out in my wood shop. Hey, I think she's a bit lonely. She's cuddling with the broom. <laughs> Hi, why are you cuddling with the broom? He's free to a good home. I'm about to start working on the headboard, which is the most damaged of all of the pieces for the bed frame. And I have started using some steel wool. So one of our subscribers, Peter Carbett, suggested using steel wool to get into the detail on the pieces that I'm working on. The only one that I could find was a extra fine triple zero steel wool. So I got this one at Leroy Merlin. It does seem to be working quite well, but I feel like a coarser one would work better to get the varnish off. So I'm using the steel wool in combination with sandpaper. And yeah, so this is the last piece. And hopefully I can get this done today so that we can use the washing soda on the entire bed frame and then it will be ready to start um, start painting tomorrow. Our neighbors are fantastic and have given us tons of produce from the gardens. We were given a few bags of tomatoes earlier in the week so that means Grant has been making sauce to the rumba beat. Rumba beat! And today, the neighbors decided to give us a little bag of apples. Just a little one. About, oh, I don't know, 20 pounds? <laughs> so that means um, lots of apple crisp and applesauce and apple whatever. <laughs> Christina started making cat food. Um, it's about half the cost of the wet food you buy in the bags. And they like it. The making the sauce. Making the sauce? Yeah. Is this all stuff from our garden? This is all stuff from the garden. Look how bright and green and vibrant that is. Thanks. Oh. Not me. Sorry. 
some of our peppers, tomatoes, all our herb man, our herb. And tomatoes from the neighbors. Yeah. As yeah, well. A couple from the neighbor. Mostly ours. Mm-hmm. You can choose to believe that or not. <laughs> what you doing? Playing the maracas. Fast way to peel a lot of garlic. Ooh. When I play the maracas, they go chick chicky boom, chick chick chicky boom. That's what I was expecting while you were shaking them. My name is Cuba Pete. I'm the king of the rumble beat. There's no room though. <laughs> and with your maracas too? They go chick chicky boom. <laughs> smells delicious in here. Yes, it is delicious in here. <laughs> there you go. So, got eight jars of sauce out of those tomatoes. That's not too bad. I've started making cat food instead of buying the wet food because it works out about half of the price. And then you know exactly what's going into the food. So we have a package of chicken pieces. I think it's all hearts. Two chicken legs. One carrot. And half of a zucchini. And all of this is going to go in the pot. Sounds delicious. <laughs> is that lunch? No. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Please give us a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Also, any comments and sharing and all of that stuff helps to boost the algorithm so our video gets out to more people. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Okay, okay bye! bye.